Okay, in this video and probably the next one or two videos, we're going to make a major enhancement to our orchestration now. And we're going to create a business process so that any purchase order over $1,000 has to be approved by a manager. And then what's going to happen is the orchestration will continue and proceed. And so to do that, we're going to have to do several things. We're going to have to create a special output message, and then we're going to have to use correlation. So here, instead of using the standard PO, um, the reason I don't want to use standard PO here is it can just get kind of confusing when the same messages are flying around. Um, for instance, this orchestration itself, I've actually gotten to loops before, especially when you start using direct binding. So that like here I receive a standard PO, and at the bottom we send a standard PO. Um, but since this is actually bound to a port, it's only going to start one orchestration. But when you start using direct binding, for instance, if you send a standard PO, that could actually start your whole orchestration again. And I've seen cases where I end up with like 100 orchestrations running before I realize what's happening because of this sort of a loop where when you send a message, it actually restarts another instance of your orchestration. So to totally avoid that, what I want to do here is create a wrapper schema called Approve PO. So we're going to start with that by going back to our schema file over here and we've been dealing with our standard purchase order. So we're going to create a new schema, add new item, and we're going to choose a schema, standard schema, and we'll call it purchase order approve PO. So I always like the root element name to be the same. So let's add a few fields here about the approver. So we're going to have a record called approver info, or it's called approval. Who's the guy that approved it? What date did he approve it on? That kind of information. So we'll insert here a couple attributes, maybe the user ID of approval. Let's just put user ID. We'll be simple here. Uh, we'll have the date, time. Of course, that element or attribute needs to be a date time. And let's see, that's probably all we need. Then we're going to create another record here. And in this case, we actually want to include the entire purchase order. So to do that, we talked about this briefly back in our schema videos we're going to go to the schema level and we're going to use the imports function here imports collection click that and then click the dot 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 click add and then click the name of the schema you want to include which is standard purchase order and instead of using uh, NS0 we're going to use PO there and now you click on the record and you go to the data structure type and then you're going to click standard purchase order. So basically we have a copy of that entire schema put right here. And then maybe why we want to have whether it was approved or denied. So back up here we'll add uh, an attribute called uh, approval status. And we could actually make that an enumerated string for instance. So we have a string here we'll go down to derived by enumeration or restriction then we go to enumeration click collection and they'll have approved uh, denied or escalated maybe the guy wants to escalate it to his manager or something like that and then if he didn't approve it we need to know the reason so let's add an attribute here called uh, denial reason and that'll just be a big string field so we now have our schema ready to go so before we use that in our orchestration we need to rebuild our schema project here and that build was succeeded and then we'll go back up to our orchestration and as we've done many times before we're going to take our schemas here and we're going to remove and re-add it just to make sure that all the references have the latest greatest changes that we made.
So we go to the schema project, add, and click OK. And now we go back to our schema. And this will also give us a chance to show how the construct shape works. So right here, instead of sending uh, an approved, if it's over $1,000, we need approval. So we're going to send the approval message, not the PO itself. So actually, let's go back up here. Let's grab our port. You can move these ports up and down so they make more sense. And we're going to actually break this connection here because we're going to change how this works. So between here and here, what we want to do is map a new message. So here, the message we want to send is now a different message. So, so far, we only had one message in our orchestration. So we now need to add a new message. And we'll call it message approval PO or approved PO. Or actually, we call it yeah, approved PO was our schema name. So we'll click message type schemas and select from a referenced assembly and the assembly name is PO schemas and it's called approve PO so there's our message so now what we need to do is change our send statement here to send that message and over here on our port you'll notice now our ports no longer hook up because this is one type of message this is another type of message so your port consists of the port, an operation, and a request. And what you can do is actually go to the request and then go to the property over here and then you can change the schema to the same schema that we just chose which is approved PO. And now these two should connect again. Now you can't change a message while it's connected. So like right here I have approved PO. If I want to try to change that you see, well, it doesn't even give me anything else on the list. It only gives me that one option. So now in front of there, we need to do a transform or a construct. So actually, if you let me just show you how this works. Uh, a transform cannot run by itself. So if you click a transform here, this shape in the gray box is the transform. But notice it automatically put it in a construct shape. So these two shapes are kind of like twins. They go together. And the other one that can go in here is, notice out of all these shapes, there's only two of them that are highlighted. Highlighted. So in a construct message kind of super shape, you can have a combination or one or the other of a message assignment and a transform. A transform, if we click on it, is basically, basically going to be a map. You can either create the new map here inside of your orchestration, or you can click here and just open an existing map. In the message assignment shape, it looks very similar to what is a BizTalk expression editor shape. And inside of here, you can see these samples at the top. You can say one message equals another message. And if you put the asterisk in parentheses after the message, what that does, it copies all the context fields from one message to the other. You can also set your distinguished and promoted fields here. So in a minute, we'll probably be using a combination of both of these. So what I need to do is somehow map my regular PO to this uh, new approval PO. So let me think about how I want to do it. I think I'll use the transform. Now the question is, do I want my map to be in the same project as my orchestration, or do I want the map to be up here in my maps uh, project? That's one of those kind of personal preference decisions. Like right now, all the maps I have in my maps project were used on the send and receive ports. So if I have a map that's specific to one orchestration, I might want it in the same project as the orchestration. I can see both reasons. Uh, so again, it's kind of a personal preference and maybe a corporate standard of how you decide to do it in your company. So right now, I'm just going to make the uh, map in my current project. So here's a construct message shape, which by the way, if you put a insert shape, you can put construct message, but then again inside of it, you have to put either a transform or a message. It can't stand by itself. Okay, so to, what you do is you click on the construct, you come over here to the properties window, and then you pick the messages that you want to construct. In most cases, it's just one. So here I'm going to click the checkbox by message approved PO. If you ever select two and then you don't want that one, you can just click the little checkbox again, it'll turn off. 
and then when you click outside that box you can see it's only got that one selected okay so and then I would what I normally do is I would take the message name here and I would click on the construct shape and then go to the name of the construct shape and I will put the message name there or maybe even something like build or construct message approved PO or construct message it, de it depends you know how familiar you are with these shapes and, and stuff if you're if you're new you might want to leave the word construct there just to help you remember that this is a construct shape and my transform is still red because I have not actually associated a map or anything with it so I can either double click on it or I can click on this little red thing and click on that box so I'm going to double click and I want to create a new map and so before I click it I need to give it a map name so I'm going to say map standard PO to approve PO and then you're going to click on the source and the destination here when you click the source you're going to go to variable names and it's going to give you a list of all your messages in your project and some of them will have green checks and some of them will maybe have an X or a red check by it and that means that those wouldn't be legal for this map and so we haven't even created the map yet so at this point anything is legal so I'm gonna map from the source is standard PO my destination click here is going to be the approval PO and then there's a button down here that says when I click OK I want you to launch the BizTalk mapper in this case it will automatically fill in my source and destination schema since I've already picked it above so I click there and it may take a 30 seconds to a minute to load depending on the size of your map. That was real time so it loaded real fast. So here is our our two schemas. Now we're gonna try this and see if it, we can get away with it. Remember there is a bulk or mass copy functoid and so ideally we can copy this purchase order to this purchase order and we did this in an earlier mapping demo and the only trick is how it builds the namespaces so we're gonna see if it works and then now we don't know who the user ID, ID or any of this information yet so what we need to do is initialize these fields so what I would use is the concat symbol here and I would double click it and add a new constant and I would just then leave the constant empty and then I would drag that field to the user ID I would not drag it to the date of time approved. Well, yeah, I guess I would. Because technically date time approved is supposed to be a date time. But right now I'm just trying to initialize these fields to empty values. So I could put the current date time there, but since it hasn't really been approved yet, I don't think that's appropriate. There is a, a thing down here that's new in 2006 called nil. It's one of the, uh, I think, advanced functoids called nil value. And you can also put that on here and then what that would do, we well, can't have both, it has, you can't have the constant and the nil value. If you put nil here, here it will actually put the a special code that says something like XSI colon nil equals true. And that means the element is there, but it truly has a nil or a null value. Okay, so I think this map is probably going to work, so I'm going to close it now. Yes, I'm going to save my changes. And now I would also here like to just rename my transform to something like map standard PO to approved PO. And again, you notice there's not enough room to actually type that in there. So again, my trick for getting around that is to add a group box here. And then in the group box, you have more characters. And then I'll move the construct inside the group box. And so it kind of helps self-document your program. And of course you can actually print out your orchestrations. You can come over here and do file print. And like here I'll do a print preview. It's taking just a minute to generate the images. And there is the preview. And I've actually printed these out before. It'll print on multiple pages and you can tape them together and put up on your wall. And then you can kind of, that can help you understand the flow of your orchestration. One idea of orchestrations is they are they do follow, follow a business process model so that a business analyst should be able to look at this and kind of see what it does. So there's going to be some things in the orchestration that are going to be rather techy and detailed, and there's going to be other things that are going to be high level. So for instance here, 
we can collapse that and all the business analyst needs to know is we're going to map standard PO to approval PO. He doesn't need to know we're going to use a map to do it or we're going to use XSLT or we're going to use, uh, you know, what technique we use is, is not concerned necessarily to the business analyst. The other thing we could do is also slide this down or actually put it over here on the other on the right side. I actually have the right side minimized here. That port surface. So we could actually flip this over here and then move it down. So that makes it a little nicer when you print it out. Okay. My approach is generally kind of to do one step at a time. So we've created this orchestration and added this shape here. So before we do a lot more development of the orchestration, I'd like to test what I've already done. So um, since this video is already 16 minutes, I'm going to stop it here, and then we'll continue this video in uh, one or two other videos following this.